踏入二零一三年 ，Webot 作者再以一连串名为即时数据情报报告嘅录音信息，预告全球性海岸线事件即将发生。由于全球性海岸线事件将会摧毁全球海边同海岛嘅城市，沿岸城市嘅居民需逃到离海岸线三百公里嘅内陆及喺北纬三十度以上嘅安全地方。当及早进到上述安全地方及租下落脚住处之后，或许全球性海岸线事件有机会仲未发生，但仍需要为事件发生之后，日后有机会喺内陆定居生活而购置一啲物资。到时甚至需要变卖手上少部分白银，转换为资金以购买物资。关于应该购买物资嘅种类，大可以分为必需品类，例如食物同食水。都系应该及早购买，购买数量至少储备每人两个星期嘅份量，但系唔建议储备超过九个月。食物方面可以考虑一啲自热温凉、脱水食物等等，一啲唔耗能源同埋燃料嘅食物。另外可以储存一啲高热量嘅食物，例如朱古力、帕拉巴等，更可以将适量嘅高热量食物放喺求生背包。以防日后突如其来嘅自然灾害，而需作进一步嘅逃生之用。小型物品类，例如生活小工具方面，可以先买一啲作紧急求生用嘅必需工具，包括求生刀、求生绳、生火工具、求生斧头等等。至于其他一啲小工具，可日后先购买，因为一啲小工具都较容易再生产同恢复供应。例如剪刀、铁钉、螺丝、螺丝批、手锯、手摇转、原子笔、单汉宝、食用工具等，所以呢啲小工具唔需要大量储存。高科技产品类，大部分高科技产品都将会喺全球性海岸线事件发生之后停止生产，所以有好多高科技产品都可以喺资金充裕下。计划预先购买落嚟，例如太阳能产品 A 多功能型太阳能电筒，型号如图中所见嘅两款。呢两款太阳能电筒，除咗可用太阳能充电作照明之外，仲具备警号、警报器、闪动求生灯、收音机等等功能。B 太阳能板，首选嘅就系卷接式柔性太阳能板。呢啲系最轻巧、防水，又能够提供最有效功率嘅太阳能充电。三码功率嘅太阳能板售价大约三百三十蚊港元。其实喺国内淘宝网或网络上，好容易找到唔同嘅零售商。大家只要输入右星太阳电池组件，揾到合适嘅商号，便能够购买。其次，或可选购一啲可携式太阳能板。一塊五瓦功率嘅太阳能板，能提供五屋 USB 输出供电，同样能够防水，扣挂喺背囊表面，甚至可吸附喺玻璃表面，售价大约系二百九十蚊港元。此外，应该预先购买嘅另一种较高科技嘅产品，就系、是、通讯器材，如通话机 （walkie-talkie）。一般喺国内嘅通话机种类，都会较香港为多。大家可以考虑购买适用于 U 频四百至四百八十兆赫、功率达五至七瓦嘅通话机。通话机最理想，仲可以供十二瓦电源充电。当然喺仍然有电话通讯嘅时候，我哋主要以电话及声 calling 嚟通讯同埋沟通，因为呢个系最方便同快捷。所以通话机只会喺完全断绝咗通讯嘅时候，先至会使用。一啲嘅通讯器材都系值得购买，因为可以让群体保持联络嘅重要工具。甚至喺经济充裕嘅情况下，不妨可以额外购买一啲二手产品作为后备之用，例如二手嘅 iPhone 3GS、iPad 2、二手嘅手提电脑等等。因为有好多科技产品喺全球性海岸线事件发生之后，再冇工厂嘅时候，呢啲产品便会升价百倍。甚至变得非常难得，甚或永远唔能够再购买得到。在此亦介绍一种高科技产品，就系、是、3D Painter
。当一啲人拥有较富裕资金嘅时候 ，3D printer 就能够成为一种小工厂嚟制造物件。此外，当白银升上天价，而你有非常充裕嘅资金，就可以购买一种 3D 列印机，因为拥有一部就等于拥有一间可以生产任何产品部件嘅工厂，价格由几万元。至上百万元不等，以佢能够生产嘅部件类型同大小而定。3D 列印即系快速成型技术嘅一种，佢系一种数位模型档案为基础，运用粉末状金属或者塑胶等可粘合材料，透过逐层列印方式嚟构造物体嘅技术。过去经常喺模具制作、工业设计等领域被用于制造模型。现正逐渐用于一种产品嘅直接制造，特别系一啲高价值嘅应用，譬如髋关节或者牙齿，或一啲飞机零件，加以使用呢种技术列印成零件，意味住呢一项技术嘅普及。3D 列印通常系采用数位技术材料印表机嚟实作。喺二十一世纪以嚟，呢一种列印机嘅产量同埋销量已有极大增长，其价格亦逐年下降。该技术无论喺珠宝、鞋类、工业设计、建筑、工程同埋施工、汽车、航空太空、牙科同医疗产业、教育、地理信息系统、土木工程、枪械以及其他领域都有所应用。由于物品透过材料一层层嘅累积被列印出嚟，该技术亦都被称为累积制造。3D 列印嘅设计过程系先透过电脑辅助设计或电脑动画建模软件建模，再将建成嘅 3D 模型分割成逐层嘅截面，从而指导印表机逐层列印。印表机透过读取档案中嘅横切面信息，用液体状、粉状或片状嘅材料，将呢啲截面逐层咁列印出嚟，再将各层截面以各种方法粘合起嚟，从而制造出一个实体。呢種技術嘅特點在於，幾乎可以做出任何形狀嘅物品。傳統嘅製造技術，如注塑法，可以以較低嘅成本大量製造最合物產品；而 3D 列印技術，則能夠以更快、更有彈性以及更低成本嘅辦法，生產數量相對較少嘅產品。一部桌面尺寸嘅 3D 列印機，就可以滿足設計者或概念開發小組製造模型嘅需要。It may be the most eye-catching development in printing since Gutenberg invented the printing press 600 years ago. A machine that can make copies of almost anything, but this time in 3D. It seems like science fiction, but 3D printing is already in use, building hearing aids, jewelry, even parts for NASA. Now the technology is becoming available to anyone, meaning you can turn your garage into a small factory. So, what would you build if you could create anything? Have a look. What you are watching is an ear being printed. Layer upon layer, tiny droplets are deposited, building up the structure. So, this is someone's ear. This would、uh, be printed to be someone's ear. Oh my goodness! The project is a type of 3D printing called bioprinting, led by Dr. Anthony Atala at the Wake Forest Institute for Regenerative Medicine in North Carolina. Same technology you have at your very own home, but instead of printing sheets of paper with ink, you're actually printing tissues with cells. The premise is simple. Send a scanned image of a body part to the printer, and the machine starts building. Ears, noses, fingers. Dr. Atala's goal is to transplant the parts directly into patients. So we're actually testing a lot of these structures、uh, right now, experimentally. The way it works is the cells are able to anchor onto the scaffold. They start making new tissue, and as that starts to happen, this scaffold goes away. An ear takes between four to six hours to make. 
printed with what's called bio ink, a mixture of biodegradable gel and actual human cells. One of the big advantages of these technologies is that you are using the patient's own cells. And by doing so, really, you avoid the major problem of rejection. Dr. Atala has specialized in regenerative medicine since 1990. But it wasn't until this TED Talk two years ago that the promise of building body parts caught fire. 90% of the patients on the transplant list are actually waiting for a kidney. You can actually see the printer back here, and that's been printing this uh, kidney structure that you see here. Here it is, you can actually see that kidney as it was printed earlier today. While implanting kidneys like this is still at least a decade away, it holds the potential to revolutionize organ transplants. Well, up until just recently, the way that we made these tissues was to actually create them by hand, one by one. When you start thinking about getting these technologies to many patients and creating thousands of these organs at the same time, you need to automate the process, and that's where bioprinting comes in. Meaning you can make thousands of kidneys. You could make thousands of organs. You know, you just pick the organ you want to make, but then you allow the printer to do them over and over again. Is this a finger? This is actually a finger. Right now, Dr. Atala's bioprinting is in the preclinical phase. Simpler organs will be the first to reach patients, starting with skin. If this were, in fact, a wound, it would be dropping real skin cells over the wounded area. The skin printing project is being funded by the U.S. military with the hope of treating injured soldiers in as little as five years. But while Dr. Atala's work is cutting edge, 3D printing isn't new. The technology has been around since the mid-80s, mainly used for prototyping in industrial settings. Professor Hod Lipson from Cornell University says that's changing. It has reached a level of technological maturity that it is uh, used beyond prototyping to actually make functional parts that are used in reality, and the aerospace industry is a good example. Some commercial planes are now outfitted with air ducts that are 3D printed, made smoother, lighter, and cheaper than the traditional method. Hollywood is using 3D printing to make costumes, like parts of a suit in Iron Man 2. And a professor in California plans to 3D print a house. In every case, a digital blueprint is either sketched or scanned and then sent to a 3D printer. The printing itself can be done by extruding a liquid, usually plastic, drop by drop, or by using a laser to fuse resins and metals. What we have here is a, a sample of a uh, titanium nose implant. Hod, who calls himself a 3D printing addict, has just co-authored a book on the subject that will be released next week. And the one thing he's betting will spur demand for the technology may surprise you. I think it will be food. I think food printing is to 3D printing what, uh, what gaming was for computers. Already, students at his lab have printed chocolate, peanut butter, even cakes. Beyond food, there are few disciplines Hod thinks 3D printing won't touch. Printing an iPod, he says, isn't that far off. If you think about the evolution of humans, we like to distinguish ourselves from other animals by the ability to make tools. And 3D printers are perhaps the ultimate tool. But what happens to laws and regulations when you have a tool to print anything? From guitars to race cars, even a model of your unborn child, people who embrace 3D printing are finding new uses for the emerging technology. Once used at the industrial level only, 3D printing has gone mainstream. Today in Manhattan, you can wander into a 3D printing store, the only of its kind, and take home your own printer for $2,200. Brie Pettis is the co-founder of MakerBot. One of the reasons we opened a retail store is because 
3D printing is still science fiction to a lot of people. The idea that you can have a machine and, you know, it's, and send it a digital design, a 3D model that's virtual, and it'll turn into something real, a physical model, it's just, it blows people's minds. From tools and toys to models and jewelry, MakerBot's printer allows anyone to design and create. We've put the design in here with the SD card. We press the big red M to get it jumped to life. It heated up, and now it's drawing in plastic. To some, the printing is still rudimentary and nothing more than a novelty item. Bree sees it as a natural evolution. Back in 2008, you could download movies, you could download books, you could download music, but you couldn't download things. MakerBot's printer only works with plastic and can only print items smaller than a shoebox. Still, more than 15,000 have been sold. Our biggest customers are NASA, GE, and seven out of the top 10 architecture firms in the US. The digital blueprints for items are found on a website created by Bree and his team called Thingiverse. We've got a kitchen cabinet door handle. This is a fan duct for your air conditioner. Over 30,000 items that can be downloaded for free. An iPhone case. And then this is a fun one. This is somebody needed carpet pin locks for their Toyota RAV4. It's been dubbed Walmart in your home. So we're all used to shopping. And when we want something, we, shop, we think, OK, where am I going to go buy it? Instead of thinking, hmm, can I make that instead? But when you can make anything, there are seemingly no boundaries which is exactly the point for Cody Wilson. We want to build the printable gun. The first in the world. Yeah, but you know, the, the important part isn't to be the first, but to actually do it, to just have one. Cody, a law student in Austin, Texas, is spearheading a group that's trying to create the Wiki Weapon, a digital design for a gun that anyone can download and build using a 3D printer. You have said that what you're setting out to do will create a weapon at every computer. Yeah, in a way of thinking, right? Where there's a computer that could be a weapon. Well, literally, where there's a 3D printer, right? I don't think most people want a weapon in their home. I think that's fine. You know, I don't think you should be armed, right? But I think you should have the choice to be. While making your own gun in the US isn't illegal, distributing the blueprints to others falls into a very gray territory. And that's where Cody is running into a number of roadblocks. So in the meantime, he's printing gun parts to avoid breaking any law. What's coming out is a lower receiver of an AR-15. The lower receiver is the only regulated part of an AR-15 semi-automatic rifle, crucial to making the weapon work. But as soon as this is clean, this will be ready to use. At the shooting range, the plastic part fires 11 rounds. 大型產品例如一些代步工具當要為著日後方便移動一些代步工具是非常值得考慮而且在全球性海岸線事件發生之後將會永遠停產 就是使用柴油的四驅車,因為四驅車能夠在交通擠塞或極惡劣的環境下,仍然可以在荒僻的路上行走,並且成為逃生設備危險地區的良好運輸工具。事實上,為著燃油有機會突然短缺的情況,可
因为申请到取证嘅时限为十二个工作日、周六、周日及香港公众假期除外。详情请登上中旅社网页。十年期通行证收费港币三百九十元。假若回乡证已过期，便需立即申请，俗称临时出入境通行证。申领三个月一次出入境有效嘅出入境通行证，收费为一百二十港元。并且需要再加收二百港元，以快证五个工作天后取证，因为距离发生时间实在非常紧迫啦。此时此刻，为住全球性海岸线事件嘅预备，已经进到最后阶段啦。